All right, bear with me. I have quite a few stuff today and quite a few updates in the field. Um, in case you were wondering today and why I'm wearing orange, uh, not that you are, but today is the International Day for the Elimination of Violence Against Women. And this morning, the Secretary General addressed a special meeting organized in um, here at UN headquarters. He said that violence against women and girls is a global pandemic, a mark of shame on all our societies, and a major obstacle to inclusive, equitable, and sustainable development. At its core, he said, violence against women is a failure by men to recognize the inherent equality and dignity of women. He added that recent efforts to uncover the issue are showing the galvanizing power of women's movements to drive the action and awareness needed to eliminate harassment and violence everywhere. The Secretary General also highlighted the UN's work to achieve gender parity among senior leadership, combat and prevent sexual harassment committed by staff and UN partners, and to end all forms of sexual exploitation and abuse by UN peacekeepers and UN staff in the field. The commemoration brought together survivors and activists under the theme Orange the World. And he, Secretary General, this morning also spoke at the opening of the eighth global forum of the UN Alliance of Civilization, which he said is fundamental to peace, security, and to sustainable development in, um, to the world we need to build. Sadly, he said, culture, faith, and a false notion of identity today are still creating serious problems and threats in different regions. As example, he pointed to the plight of the Rohingya people of Myanmar, the Yazidi people in Iraq. He stressed the need for all of us to work together to build societies that are truly respectful and inclusive, where diversity is seen as a richness and not a threat, for this to happen, the Secretary General said we must engage in sincere and inclusive dialogue. We, must, we need to harness the creativity and energy of young people, and our efforts must be anchored in respect for universal human rights. His full remarks have been distributed. And as I mentioned, a few updates from the field. On Yemen, the Secretary General Special Envoy Martin Griffiths today tweeted that he welcomes Ansar Allah's announcement to halt drone and missile attacks. Mr. Griffiths added that he hopes that all parties continue to exercise restraint to create a conducive environment for convening consultations. As you'll recall, last week, he welcomed President Hadi's announcement to move swiftly to a political solution and said he believes that Ansar Allah is committed to this. Mr. Griffith said he feels that we are close to resolving the preparatory issues to reconvene the parties, and he intends to visit Sanad this week to finalize arrangements. He noted he has received firm assurances from the leadership of the parties that they are committed to attending. The Special Envoy also plans to visit Hodeida this week with UN Resident and Humanitarian Coordinator Lise Grande to revisit a UN supervisory role and to draw attention to the continued need for pause in the fighting. And over the weekend, Mr. Griffiths took part in the Sirbani Yas Forum in the United Arab Emirates, and he is back in Amman today. And from the Democratic Republic of the Congo, the UN peacekeeping mission there reports that suspected Allied Democratic Forces elements launched an attack on Friday evening in the area of Boykene, close to Beni in North Kivu province. One civilian was reportedly wounded and two homes and a civilian vehicle were destroyed. A member of the Indian Foreign Police Unit stationed there was also lightly wounded. The UN mission and the Congolese Armed Forces have increased security measures in the Beni area, including around hotels occupied by UN personnel and humanitarian uh, workers. Uh, who are focused on the Ebola response, and they've also expanded their support of police operations in the Beni area. The mission also reports that memorial services were held over the weekend for the Malawan and Tanzanian peacekeepers who were killed last week during an operation against the ADF in the Beni area. And the World Health Organization, for its part, says that following the attacks on Friday in Beni, all activities related to Ebola response were relaunched yesterday, and that includes vaccination activities, which are continuing. The treatment centers, which are run by partners, also remain operational. And on the Central African Republic, we issued a statement over the weekend on the recent violence in the country. There was an attack on a camp for internally displaced pe persons last week, as well as a separate attack on, a UN, uh, on the UN mission in the country in which a Tanzanian peacekeeper was killed. The UN mission in the Central African Republic reports that 60 civilians were killed in that attack in the IDP camp in 
Alin Dao. The mission provided uh, security to an estimated 3,000 people who sought protection at its temporary operating base, and the peacekeepers also dispatched a patrol to the scene of the clashes to investigate the incidents. It also intensified patrols near the town to provide protection to civilians and to de deter activities by armed groups. The UN mission is also engaging with the Union for Peace in Central African Republic and the Anti-Balaka to address their roles in instigating the violence, as well as religious leaders on ending this violence in Nalindao and Waka prefectures. Also, just to flag that uh, from the uh, colleagues of the mission, that our friend Yekatum was surren surrendered to the International Criminal Court in The Hague on Saturday following the issuing of arrest warrant for his alleged criminal responsibility for war crimes and crimes against humanity conducted in the western part of the country between December 2013 and August 2014. At the request of the government, the mission provided reinforced security in the uh, Camp uh, Duru prison where he was held in custody and provided an escort to his transportation to the airport. Turning to Syria, uh, we are concerned about reported restrictions to education, health, and nutrition services in the northeast of the country since September. Half of the 102,000 children enrolled in government schools in northeast Syria are reportedly facing transportation restrictions, especially in Kamshili uh, and uh, Hasake cities. Uh, of the affected school children, an estimated 10,000 have not been able to attend school since late September. The UN continues to provide education support in the Northeast, including through rehabilitation of schools, installations of prefab prefabricated classrooms, targeted programs to help those who have missed years of school to catch up and provision of educational material. Access to health facilities has also been reportedly restricted, although health support continues in some facilities and in internally displaced people settlements across the governorate. The UN calls on all parties to allow safe, sustained, and unimpeded access for all in need, in line with their obligations under international humanitarian law. And on Haiti, the peacekeeping mission there, Minujust reports uh, that demonstrations held yesterday were largely peaceful, though there were reports of casualties. The Haitian National Police pre-deployed in the sensitive areas in the country, supported by the UN Mission's foreign police units in key areas of Port-au-Prince and its regions. And uh, Knut Otsby, the UN Resident Coordinator in Myanmar, said uh, that he is deeply concerned about reports of shooting at Ahnauk Yi camp in central Rakhine State, which holds internally displaced people who had been fleeing, who fled the violence in 2012. He called for calm, nonviolent, and restraint, ex nonviolence and restraint, expressing his appreciation for the work of the organization, which provides first aid to, on site to the injured. The UN will continue to monitor the situation and is committed to supporting sustainable solutions to the situation in Rakhine. And our humanitarian colleagues in Libya report that a joint UN interagency visit to Tawerga and Misrata on the 14th and 15th of November found high level of destruction to houses and infrastructure, as well as protection risks, included unexploded ordinances. Most Tawergans remain displaced, living in urban settings and in more than 26 poorly resourced camps throughout Libya, where humanitarian conditions have reportedly deteriorated. Leishmaniasis, a disease transmitted by the bite of certain type of sand flies, is a major concern with very limited or no treatment available. The humanitarian community will mobilize to address uh, the people's most urgent needs while engaging with authorities and development partners to ensure that durable solutions are promoted, allowing for voluntary, safe, and dignified returns. And you, you will have seen that Nikolai Mladenov, the Special Coordinator for the Middle East Peace Process, briefed the Security Council by video conference today. He said that in recent days, we witnessed another dangerous escalation of violence in Gaza that risked unleashing an armed conflict with catastrophic consequences for two million impoverished Palestinians. He said his team had worked closely with Egypt and all concerned parties to ensure a return to the 2014 ceasefire arrangements Thankfully, he added, a precarious restoration of calm has now been achieved, and we must all work to ensure that this calm is maintained. And the annual UN Female Police Officer of the Year Award will be presented in New York today. The 2018 award is presented to Officer Phyllis Ama Tabwe Ose, 
uh, who is with the UN mission in Somalia. Ms. Ose is the superintendent of police from the Ghana Police Service, whose exemplary work has positively impacted the local community and helped to build the capacities of the host state uh, police in Juba land. This is the first time the award is being presented in New York, and a ceremony is being co-hosted by the UN Police Division and the Permanent Mission of Canada. And the World Health Organization today released its 11th malaria report, which says reduction in malaria cases have stalled after several years of decline globally. For the second consecutive years, the annual report relieves a plateauing in numbers in 2017, with an estimated 219 million cases of malaria compared to 217 in the year of 2016. But the preceding years, the number of people contracting malaria globally had been steadily falling. In 2017, approximately 70% of all malaria cases were concentrated in 10 African countries in India. In order to get the reduction of malaria deaths and disease back on track, WHO and partners launched a new country-led response to scale up prevention and treatment, increase, increase investment, and protect vulnerable people and the, of the, from the deadly disease. More information online. Today is World Toilet Day, and this year's theme is When Nature Calls and highlights the need to act on sanitation crisis. Nearly 4.5 billion people live without access to safe toilet, and 892 million people still practice open defecation, which can lead to the spread of disease and contamination of water and soil and have serious impact on public health. More information online. Um, and on Wednesday uh, will be World TV Day, which we are marking today. And our colleagues at the Department of Public Information and the UN Foundation are holding an event this afternoon in ECOSOC Chamber called Lights, Camera, Action on the Sustainable Development Goals. The 3 p.m. event consists of a series of discussions with TV executives uh, that will showcase production and use to promote the SDGs. You're all welcome to attend. And lastly, tomorrow we'll have something slightly different, a uh, bit li different lineup at the briefing. At noon, we will start with Emmy nominated actress and star of the show Stranger Things, Millie Bobby Brown. Uh, and UNICEF's Director of Communications, Paloma Escudero, will be here to briefly talk to you about the importance of empowering children as part of UNICEF's commemoration of Children's Day. Uh, and after, right after my briefing, I will uh, immediately have, be joined by Dean Brooks, Director of the Interagency Network for Education Emergencies, Rajika Bandari, Director of the Center for Academic Mobility and Research, and Annette Kelly, Director of the Office of the High Commissioner for Refugees. They will be here to brief you on UNESCO's flagship annual education report, 2019 Global Education Monitoring, Migration, Displacement, and Education, Building Bridges, Not Walls. Mademoiselle. Thank you. I was wondering if you have anything for us uh, on the meeting between the Turkish Foreign Minister and the Secretary General, and did the Minister request an international investigation? Yes, the Secretary General and uh, the Foreign Minister of Turkey had a pull aside on the sidelines of the uh, Alliance Civilization uh, meeting. They discussed Yemen, Syria, Cyprus, as well as the uh, murder of Jamal Khashoggi. Uh, since you asked, uh, we have not uh, received any formal uh, request uh, from the Turkish side. And if uh, something is, is uh, submitted, uh, we will let you uh, know. James. Uh, follow up on that. Um, I want to get clear some of the stuff you've said in recent days and recent weeks on exactly how this will work. I'm sorry to revisit okay. this. Um, you have said you need a request from a member state, for example, Turkey, and you've also said that you need a mandate from a legislative body, and then you p pointed to the Bhutto case, mm -hmm. where there wasn't a mandate. There was an exchange of letters where then Secretary General Ban Ki-moon informed the Security Council what he was, was going to do. There was an exchange of letter, and they, that was, uh, if we go back to that time, it was interpreted as backing from a, a blessing. A blessing, but not a, ma not a legal mandate. We, one can use a small m, right? I, I don't want to get too much into hypotheticals, but the no, point but is that we do, clear we do need, the, we do need a, so we, the Secretary General feels that he, he needs a, a mandate from, the, uh, from a legislative body. He feels he needs a mandate. Is that what the Office of Legal Affairs are telling him, that he the, needs the Secretary a mandate? General the Secretary General receives advice from his legal counsel 
uh, and then acts. Uh, acts Can upon we it. see the advice from no. his legal no. first department? No, that is uh, any advice between an individual and his legal counsel usually is not shared. Masood. Thank you, sir. Uh, Stefan, can you confirm or, or that uh, when Mr. Jeremy Hunt, uh, British uh, foreign secretary, went to see the, when the uh, prince, uh, the crown prince of Saudi Arabia, on a resolution that he was bringing in the Security Council to stop the war in Yemen and allow the aid to go through, that he threw a fit, and so far the resolution has been stalled. Do you know anything that, about this? I, 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 that sounds like a, a question for my colleague, Mr. Matthew Moody. I do not speak for either of their majesties' government, the Saudi government or the British government. No, but, uh, but the thing is that was there a resolution that was stopped? I, I, was that stalled? is within the domain of the Security Council. But it, it, I mean, in the sense that he went to... Ma Ma uh, Masood, I don't speak for the British government, I don't speak for the Saudi government, and I don't speak for the presidency of the Security Council. I speak for one person, that's the Secretary General. Okay. What, what, the, uh, what the Security Council members do with their resolution and their negotiations is not for me to comment on. Sid Reis. Shukran. Um, first, can you confirm that Mr. Demistura will stay in office another month as it has been circulated here? Uh, that's my first question. Okay, the, the, I don't have exact dates. What is clear is that uh, there will be no, uh, we want to make sure that there's no gap uh, in the leadership of the office, so Mr. Dimistor is staying on uh, for, for a bit longer, and that's really to make sure uh, that there is no gap in, in not only a very important office, but at an extremely critical time in the Syria talks. Yeah. And my question about uh, Mr. Mladenov's remark to the Security Council, in which he said clearly that the uh, one who started the latest escalation was Israel, not the Palestinians. But he failed also to follow up with that responsibility, and he just stated it. And he said that one hotel was bombarded and the TV station. But the, they were nowhere to be found that he is opposing that or he is de condemning, targeting a hotel and a TV station. I, I think it, it is clear that uh, Mr. Uh, Bladenov is calling for a halt uh, to the yes. fighting. His, his report uh, speaks for itself, and he is reporting the facts as we're able to, to gather them. Ben. Hi. Is the UN involved in any way in trying to help Asia Bibi gain asylum outside of Pakistan? Uh, not that I'm aware of, but I can check uh, on those uh, developments. Okay. Yes. Hi, Steph. I just have a sort of a housekeeping question. Do you know if the SG is planning to give his own press conference uh, by the end of the year? I, I or think New usually year? we try. I think what we did it's last year is more of a forward looking uh, start of the year than. Uh, a recap in the holidays. Uh, there's going to be a lot of travel in, in December as well, which we'll be announcing. Mr. Bayes. Um, today, as you have um, said, is a day about violence uh, against women mm -hmm. and girls. On this day, does the Secretary General have concern about the efforts that seem to be being made by the US delegation uh, in the Third Committee? in a number of different amendments that they've put forward to change agreed language on gender that has been in place since the Beijing Women's Conference, so for 23 years? Look, uh, each country will bring its own uh, position. Uh, for the Secretary General, uh, I think he, this, um, he, he, th this need to keep language that has been uh, agreed upon uh, for a long time is important. Um, but obviously the member states, this is a discussion that involves uh, member states. As, as it's so important, will the Secretary General try and have a conversation with whoever is driving this in Washington? And the suggestion from diplomats is this is coming from the Vice President's office. Mm -hmm. will, will the Secretary General perhaps reach out to Vice President the, Pence the, on this issue? I'm not aware of any direct contact with Vice President Pence. Our main point of contact is with the U.S. mission here. Abdelhamid and Masoud. Back to the Khashoggi affair, what do you mean, uh, Stefan, by legal mandate? 
where this comes from, uh, how the how the SG can obtain. Uh, it needs a, a backing from a legislative body. Wh wh like what? What like legislative body? Security part? Council. The, I mean, we've seen different. Uh, investigations take different forms, uh, and as far as I recall, they all have had some backing from one of the so UN's legislative bodies. But I, I, I'm not. I don't want to get just into. Just one question. Yes. If a member state requests the SG to do this investigation, would he respond to that member state? If a member the way state, Lebanon asks the former Secretary General to investigate the killing of former Prime Minister Harriet. Well, I mean, if you it recall- It was from Lebanon. F first of all, uh, when we get a formal request, we will study it and we will respond to it accordingly. If you recall, the, the Lebanon, uh, the Lebanon uh, the tribunal investigation it went through the Security Council. It was the created tribunal, through yes, but the request resolution. came from Lebanon first. It, it also, yes. it, involved, it involved the Security Council. Yes, Masoud. Uh, I mean, notwithstanding whether the resolution was stalled or not, do you, are you aware that the Saudi coalition is fully allowing the aid for the Yemenis to go through? Uh, I think Mr. Uh, Beasley was very clear on issues having to do with uh, aid, that. not not for. And I'm not aware that the situation has changed since he briefed you on Friday. So it is uh, Maggie okay, agrees. So so where does it stand now? I mean, uh, as I said, I'm not aware of the situation having uh, having changed. Uh, Mr. Griffiths will be uh, in Hodeida with Lise Grande to take a look uh, at the situation in, in the port and to again appeal for uh, the free flow of humanitarian aid. Sato. Yes, for a question about uh, Yemen. So does uh, uh, Mr. Griffiths expect the uh, peace talk happen in Sweden by end of this month? I, I don't think anyone wants to be boxed in, uh, boxed in by, uh, by, by date. Uh, I think he, he gave some fairly positive uh, assessment of his feeling that the, these, this gathering could happen. Thank you. Monica-san, all yours. 